Hello, my name is Robert McGee and I'm here today to introduce you to the Houdini Roadmap, a look into the Houdini of today and the Houdini of tomorrow. To explore this roadmap we are going to take a look at key areas of Houdini and how they are being developed. Then we will sneak peek some of the features you can expect in future releases. So what have we been up to in our development of Houdini? What is our focus? What are our goals? Over the last few years, you have seen side effects invest heavily in our visual effects toolset as we continue to offer world-class tools to our feature film and TV customers. We have also worked closely with indie and AAA game studios to develop the Houdini engine and procedural content creation tools designed to make it easier to build games populated with environments, props, and real-time effects. Going forward, these will continue to be key areas of focus while we put more and more work into our modeling, rendering, and animation tools. We have many artists in the community asking for us to improve these important areas of Houdini's feature set to make Houdini more of a generalist solution. This means that we will tune up Houdini for use in traditional parts of the CG pipeline while we work with customers to make sure all these tools are production ready, which is of course the ultimate goal of all our development efforts at SideFX. Well here we are at SIGGRAPH 2016 in Anaheim, which is actually a major milestone for SideFX. Houdini 1.0 was first announced at SIGGRAPH 1996, and over the last 20 years it has grown and matured into the award-winning software it is today. What is exciting is that not only is Houdini a robust, production-proven solution, SideFX continues to invest heavily in R&D, allowing it to feel fresh with each new release. In fact, over the last year and a half, we have had three big releases, each containing a wealth of new features. This commitment to R&D has helped customers achieve more with the knowledge that SideFX has their back. I would now like to take you through the key features introduced over these three releases before we take a peek into the future. Over the last three releases, we have added new VFX tools such as the PBD solver used for snow and sand, the finite element solver, and viscosity tools such as lava and melt object. At the same time, we have put a big focus on performance with features such as distributed sims and pack primitives. Helping you create more sophisticated sims with the resources at your disposal is always a key objective for side effects. With Houdini 14, SideFX added crowds to Houdini. Initially designed to create mid to background crowd sims, we've continued to develop and add features to this new solver. With Houdini 15, we added ragdolls and limb detachment, while in 15.5, refinements such as locomotion controls, foot planting, and terrain adaption make it possible to create more accurate crowd simulations. For modeling, SideFX has been focusing on modernizing its tools while creating a better user experience in the viewport. Tools such as Polybridge, Polybevel, and Polysplit have all been redesigned, while new Retopo tools have brought a whole new modeling workflow into Houdini. Tweak modeling has been improved with new selection hotkeys, edge sliding, and more. Rendering efforts have taken the already production-ready Mantra and made it better. A more artist-friendly UI was created for the Mantra node, and the principled or Disney shader has been added to make it easier to light and render a shot. Shader buildings have improved with new shader effects menus, triplanar and curvature vops, and layered material nodes. And a VR lens camera has been added for pre-rendered virtual reality shots. While most people don't think of creating characters in Houdini, there have been lots of character projects over the course of the last 20 years, including Disney's The Wild in 2006. Lately, side effects have been primarily focused on VFX tools and our growing games initiative, and the character tools have not moved forward at a proper pace. With Houdini 14, a plan was put in place to modernize these tools with initial efforts focused on the underlying tools such as the channel editor. We optimized performance and added animation layers, onion skinning, pose library tool, and a character picker. This work on the animation tools will allow for more robust characters as we develop stronger rigging tools. Deltamush, which offers nice smoothing at joints, was a first step in this area. You will learn more about our ongoing character goals later in the presentation. So what's next as we move into 2017? Each area that we have discussed so far is under development with key goals in mind. For VFX, we want to help you create bigger and bigger sims that meet the growing demands of clients looking for the next big blossbuster or award-winning ad. For crowds, we will be adding controls and refinement designed to turn the mid to background crowds into foreground hero crowds. For modeling, the goal is to create tools that work both interactively and procedurally. Whether you are modeling in the viewport or building an asset for use in Houdini Engine, our tools will be designed to work on both ends. 
For rendering, we will optimize both the user experience and the speed of Mantra itself. For character, it is time to start rigging, with new auto rig and muscle tools in development. With our next release, creating and animating characters in Houdini will become a much more common occurrence. Now let's take a closer look at some of the features coming in our next release. In VFX, we will be adding new fluid tools such as guided simulations, accurate surface tension, and suction force. Procedural Oceans will be getting new seamless connections as shown with this ocean setup on an organic shape. We will also have better presets and new foam and spray methodologies. For modeling, we will continue to focus on the user experience in the viewport while strengthening our procedural tools. The next version of Houdini will be getting radio menus, which make it easier to access tools right from your cursor. Currently, you can access tools using the tool shelf or the tab key which involves several clicks as you type out the name of the tool. With radial menus you will have quick access to your tools using a menu that appears right at your cursor's current position. Here you can see radial menus being used to turn on and off snapping, poly extruding phases, and subdividing a model. The radial menus you see here are just a prototype and you can expect the tools associated with each menu to be optimized for the final release. In the last few releases, editing points has become easier and easier in Houdini. While the edit node is always that modelers move points one by one, there are now additional tools which make it easier to get the shape that you want. For instance, you can select a row of points and line them up, or you can spread them out evenly. You can also select a few edges, then convert them into a circle. Here we are grabbing those edges in the center of this shape, and then we can right mouse button click and say make circle. This is perfect if you want to add detail to your model. These tools are actually in Houdini 15.5 and you can use them today. For the next release we are also adding the ability to select points and relax them. You can then repeat the relax to get the smooth look that you want. The key is that tweak modeling is getting more feature rich with each new release, and we're going to continue to prove it going forward. When it comes to procedural modeling, new terrain tools are being worked on to make it easier to build sophisticated worlds. Here is an early prototype of a project we introduced at GDC earlier this year. Originally built using a COP based approach, this work is being moved into SOPs where a number of new nodes are being added to build up and preview terrains. The results can then be rendered or baked into low res geometry for use in a game. For lighting and rendering, there are a number of initiatives in place. With Mantra, you will see 10 times faster startup, adaptive sampling, and new pixel filtering for more efficient renderings. There will also be some key changes to shader building, but we'll talk about that in a minute. First, let's take a look at character animation and rigging. You've already learned about the underlying changes made to optimize characters and improve workflow in the animation editor and the viewport. Now it is time to tackle rigging, and that is exactly what we are up to. To make sure that our character initiative is meeting your needs, we are working with studios such as Shed and Montreal to test out Houdini in real life production. With their short film outside, Houdini was used to rig, animate, and render, and the feedback from that experience is helping shape our tools going forward. We look forward to working with more studios as these character tools mature to help get production-ready solutions into your hands. To start, we will be implementing new auto-rigging tools which simplify the process of rigging the characters and creatures. Choosing from a menu of existing body parts, you will bring over a positioning rig to align with the character. This list of body parts will include rigs created by side effects, but can also contain rigs you have set up and added for your specific production needs. It is important to us that this process be fully customizable. Here you can see we're grabbing the positioning rig for the hand and placing all the joints exactly where they're going to be needed.
Once you have that ready, uh, you can create the animation rig itself. Now this rig uh, is not currently captured to the body. Uh, as we move forward, the capturing process will happen at the same time. Uh, for now, as you can see, all the animation controls uh, needed for this particular rig are in place and ready to go uh, based on the positioning rig. When it comes to animating these rigs, you will be able to hide the bones and controls and use an invisible rig. This means that you can pick the parts of the character directly and then pose from there. This direct manipulation lets you focus on the shot and not be distracted by items you don't need to see. You can use radial menus to switch between translate and rotate, again keeping your focus on the character's position in the shot. Our next release will also include a new FEM based system for creating muscles and skin. You will be able to set up the appropriate muscle system and then watch the skin work accordingly. Here you can see the technique for drawing the muscles. We start by selecting the surface and the bones and then draw the muscles in place just below the surface. You can see them getting created in relation to the selected surface. This will allow you to quickly set up the muscle rig to use when capturing the geometry. Here you can see a torso which uses FEM for both the muscles and the skin. More and more characters are using simulation for muscle, skin, hair, and fur, and Houdini is going to be well positioned to tackle all of these elements while creating rigs that are easy to animate. In this presentation, we looked at where Houdini has been, where it is going, and a number of key areas. Rest assured that this is only a sneak peek at some of the new features we are working on. There will be lots more to talk about when the release is formally announced, and we look forward to talking to you about it at that time. But before we go, let's talk about one last thing. As you know, Houdini is best known for its procedural node-based workflow, which takes place primarily in the node network. In our next release, this node network will be redesigned from the ground up. This is big news that I probably shouldn't be talking about, but it's too important to leave out of discussion. This new network editor will have a huge performance boost, especially when handling networks with thousands of nodes. It will be designed to be more aesthetically pleasing, and you will be able to customize the node shape. It will be faster for wiring, layout, and more, and will be a more pleasant experience overall. The look of the new network editor is top secret, but let's take a quick peek. Here you can see some of the new shapes and the look of the wires and the connectors. There are lots of cool features we're not showing you here, but we just want to give you a quick peek at what's coming. This new look will also affect other network types such as VOPs, where you will have stronger shader building network tools. Each node will have shader thumbnails and the shader modules have been redesigned. With the new layer material node, you will be able to take existing materials from an enriched shader library and quickly comp together a look. Mantra servers will be removed in favor of a feature complete principled uber shader. This will be a much stronger experience for artists and we look forward to you getting your hands on it. So when will all this happen? We will have a release to customers on our annual upgrade plan at the end of 2016. So it's coming up fast and a public release in early 2017. If you are a customer on our annual upgrade plan and you'd like to beta test the new version, please contact your account manager. But please only volunteer if you have time to take the new version for a robust test drive. You will need lots of hands-on work to get it ready for production. Before we go, I would like to announce an upcoming contest called Marvelous Machines. There will be lots of great prizes including hardware and software. Keep an eye out for it and be sure to enter. If you do not currently use Houdini, you can try out our free Houdini Apprentice Edition. Visit our website at sideeffects.com to download it today. You can also keep in touch via Facebook and Twitter if you want to learn more about Houdini 16 as it is released to the community. Thank you for listening and have a great day at the show.